Uh, am I allowed to say this? I think I'm allowed to say this. Uh, I've eaten shrooms a couple times, but I haven't gone the full, I'm talking to a few researchers in psychedelics. It's an interesting scientifically place. Like what is the portal you're entering when you take psychedelics? Or another way to ask is like dreams. What yeah, are- So let me tell you what I think, which is based on nothing. Like <laughs> this is based on my, like, right? So I don't- so Your intuition. It's based on my, it's based on my, I'm guessing now, um, based on what I do know, I would say. But I think that, well, think about what happens. So you're running, your brain's running this internal model right. and it's all outside of your awareness. For the, you see the, you feel the products, but you don't, you don't sense the, you have no awareness of the mechanics of it, right? right. It's going on all the time. Um, and so one thing that's going on all the time that you're completely unaware of is that um, when your brain, your brain is basically asking itself, figuratively speaking, not literally, right? Like how is the sense, give it the last time I was in this sensory array with this stuff going on in my body and I, and that this chain of events, which just occurred, what did I do next? What did I feel next? What did I see next? And so it doesn't come up with one answer. It comes up with a distribution of it, possible answers. And then there has to be some selection process. And so you have a, a network in your brain, a subnetwork in your brain, a, a population of neurons that helps to choose. It's not, I'm not talking about a homunculus in your brain or anything silly like that. Um, uh, this is not the soul. It's not the center of yourself or anything like that. But there is um, it, uh, uh, a set of neurons that weighs the probabilities uh, um, um, and, and helps to select uh, or narrow the field. Okay. And that, that network is working all the time. It's actually called the control network, the executive control network, or you can call it a frontoparietal because the regions of the brain that make it up are in the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe. There are also parts that belong to the subcortical parts of your brain. It doesn't really matter. The point is that, that there is this network and it is working all the time. Whether or not you feel in control, whether or not you feel like you're expending effort doesn't really matter. It's on all the time, except when you sleep. When you sleep, it's, it's a little bit relaxed. <laughs> and so think about what's happening when you sleep. When you sleep, the, ex the external world recedes, the sense data from, so basically your model becomes a little bit, the tethers from the world are loosened. And this network, which is involved in, you know, maybe weeding out unrealistic things is a little bit quiet. So you, your dreams are really your internal model that's unconstrained by the immediate world, except, so you can do things that you can't do in real life in your dreams, right? You can fly. Like I, for example, when I fly on my back in a dream, I'm much faster than when I fly on my front. Don't ask me why. I don't know. But when you're laying on your back in your dream? No. When I'm in my dream and flying in a dream, I am much faster flyer in the you air. fly often? Mm -hmm. Often, but you, you I, talk about it like you. I don't think I've flown for many years. Well, you must try it. I've I've fall, I've uh, flown. Uh, I've fallen. That's scary. Yeah, but yeah. you fl You're talking about like yeah. I airplane. fly. I fly in my dreams, oh, that's and I'm way faster, right? On your back. On my back, way faster. Um, now you can say, well, you know, you never flew in your life, right? It's conceptual combination. I mean, I've flown in an airplane, and I've seen birds fly and I've watched movies of people flying and I know Superman probably flies. I don't know if he flies faster on his back, but he's, well, he's, he's, I've he's never seen flying on his front, front right? But so. yeah. But anyways, my point is that, you know, all of this stuff really, um, all these experiences really become part of your internal model. The thing is that when you're asleep, your internal model is still being constrained by your body. Your, your brain's always attached to your body. It's always receiving sense data from your body. You're mostly never aware of it uh, unless you run up the stairs uh, or, or, you know, uh, maybe you um, are ill in some way. But you're mostly not aware of it, which is a really good thing because if you were, you, you know, you'd never pay attention to anything outside your own skin ever again. Like right now, you seem like you're sitting there very calmly, but you have a, a virtual Whole thing drama, on. right? Yeah. It's like a 
like yeah. a like an opera going yeah. on inside your body. And so I think that one of the things that happens when people um, take psilocybin or take uh, you know ketamine, for example, is that the tethers <laughs> are completely removed. are completely removed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fascinating. And then, but and and that's yeah. why it's helpful to have a guide, right? Because the guide is giving you sense data to steer that internal model so that it doesn't go completely off the rails. Yeah, no, there's, so, again, that wiring to the other brain, that's the guide, is at least a tiny little tether. Exactly. Yeah. 